Hi there, it's Jenna from scrollinggrace.com. Today I'm going to be doing a tip-in. Um, so if you don't know what tip-ins are, they're really common in the Bible journaling world. It's basically where you just add a sheet of paper into your journaling Bible. Um, so if you don't want to paint or um, color or do it, anything directly in your Bible, tippins are a great, great source, um, especially if you want a full page to work on and you don't have an interleaf journaling Bible. Um, I'm constantly saying, just make a tippin, but I haven't really shown how to do tippins. I've only had one other tippin tutorial because I just don't do them all that often. But um, I was watching Sandy Alnock here on YouTube the other day. She's an amazing fab journaler. And she um, used this Tomo River paper. And it's basically this paper that feels exactly like the paper that's used in the journaling Bible. Um, it's, it feels like the same thickness, same, like it just reacts the same way to watercolors and things like that. So I had to order it and had to try it out. Um, and I decided first off to go ahead and try to make this tip in um, with a ton of watercolor because I wanted to see how it reacts with watercolor. And um, it really just reacted exactly like a journaling page where it dries a lot quicker. Um, colors don't blend quite as easily as with watercolor paper. Um, it's just a very different experience painting on um, Bible paper or this Tomo River paper than it is on watercolor paper, but it's still, um, once you get used to it, it's so much fun and it totally works uh, really well. So um, I was super excited to try this out. This is um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of the paper and I got the cream color. They also have white, but since my Bible pages are usually cream, I decided to get the cream color here. And it looks exactly like the Bible page. <laughs> so I would not be surprised if they told me that um, this is the same paper that they use to print the Bible, journaling Bibles on. So, um, so again, to try this paper out, I decided to just smash a bunch of watercolor all over the page. And I am, um, instead of cutting my paper to size first, I decided to just paint the whole entire page and then I can kind of decide what spots I think are the prettiest and cut that to size with my journaling Bible and you'll see this later on. I also just want to note that I will put all of the links to the supplies that I used in the description below of this video and I'll also put it in the blog post that goes along with this video at scribblinggrace.com slash watercolor tippin. Um, and again, that link will be below as well. So check out the blog post because there's some extra information in there um, and links to other really helpful tutorials like links to the brush calligraphy tutorials that I'm going to be using later. So um, if you head on over there, you'll find all the information that you need um, in the blog post. So um, as far as painting, <laughs> finally getting to the painting part. So I'm using my Kiritake Ganta Tampi watercolor set that I use all the time. I love using this directly in my Bible because it doesn't bleed through the journaling Bible page. Um, but it's also fun um, to show you how you can use it outside of your Bible as well and create these tippins. So I'm just using a really big round paintbrush and um, lots of water and lots of pigment and I'm just kind of bouncing my brush around the page. So I'm trying to just kind of do little sections of different colors. As you can see here, I'm just using my green, trying to just um, create little pockets of that green color. I started with my yellow and some, or I started with my pink and then some yellow, which also kind of created an orangey color. Um, and I am really terrible about keeping my colors clean. I don't ever really mix my colors since these Kiritake set already has, I have the 48 color set or 42 color set, um, the really big set. So it already has all these pre-mixed colors. So I don't ever like just use a palette and mix them. Um, so sometimes I will just end up going from purple into my yellow and <laughs> get some kind of orangey color on the surface of my yellow paint, but I personally don't mind. Um, but if that's some, something that bothers you, just make sure you clean your brush really well in between um, switching colors and things like that. Um, another thing with this kind of patchwork watercolor design to remember, while working on this paper, the colors do dry a lot faster. You're not going to get the same type of blending that you do with watercolor paper. Um, 
if it's not completely dry before you start adding another color next to it, those colors will kind of blend together. So colors that are opposite, like um, blue and yellow, that will end up turning kind of a green color where they meet. Um, and things, you want to be careful between things like your green and your reds or you're going to get brown. Um, and you don't want brown on a colorful page. So just try to be careful. Um, if you do end up getting colors that are kind of blend together, keep a paper towel handy so that you can dab those sections up um, so that you don't get those brown puddles. Um, so yeah, again, I am not really following any certain technique. I'm just getting the paint on the page. It's my big motto. Just get that paint on the page. Don't think too much about it. Don't worry too much about it. Um, it's all just about having fun. If it doesn't turn out perfect, that's okay. Um, especially with Bible journaling, we're just about creating for the Lord and worshiping Him. So it shouldn't uh, matter if our page turns out perfect or not. Um, and when you're doing a tip-in like this, it totally takes the pressure away because you're not creating directly in your Bible. So tip-ins are especially great for beginners if you're cautious about um, messing up your beautiful Bible. Um, though I don't believe you can mess it up if you feel that way. <laughs> um, doing a tip-in like this on a separate sheet of paper. So if you do totally mess it up and you hate it, you can always just scrap it. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so I'm just adding in different layers now. So I already went, filled up pretty much my whole page and now I'm just kind of going over the spots where I feel like need a little bit more color, where I don't love how they ended up, um, like my purple, adding some purple in the center, adding some more yellow over those original yellows to make those a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry my page and then just continue adding in color until I feel like it's exactly what I wanted my page to look like. So I dry my page using my craft heat gun, which I love to pieces. This is the one tool that I use for every single journaling Bible page that I have. It's You could essentially use a hair dryer as well. The benefit of the heat gun is that it pumps even hotter air and the airflow is not nearly as harsh. Um, it's just like very light amount of air that's being pushed out, but it's so hot that it dries that page super duper quick. quick. Uh, super duper quack. But um, yeah, so I love my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you could totally just let it air dry or you can use a heat, uh, blow dryer if you must. Um, so again, I, one of the things about watercolor, um, one of the biggest tips that I can give is to work in layers. So um, you can always dry the page and then add some more color on top if it's not exactly how you want it. Um, do note though that once the watercolor is dry, it's not going to move around on the page. Um, if the watercolor is still wet, then you can still like add water, add colors to it, and uh, move it around on the page. But working in layers helps to add a little bit extra oomph to the page. Um, and it adds a lot of depth as well. But of course, if you wanted to keep it even simpler, just do one layer um, and then you're good to go. You don't need to <laughs> keep adding paint if you don't want to. Um, sometimes it's hard to decide when to stop as well. <laughs> this one was a hard one. See, here's what I'm talking about with that puddle of brown. Um, I had blue over the orange color, which created kind of a puddle of brown. So I just picked it up as quickly as I could with my um, paper towel and we're good to go. Just keep on painting. Um, all right, there's another little puddle of brown with the purple and yellow as well. So um, just a reminder, just try to keep those colors um, somewhat away from each other. If they're touching like mine are, just try to um, not add quite so much water. If you're working on normal watercolor paper, it's a totally different experience. But this is what it's like on um, this Tomo River paper or journaling Bible paper that's thinner, dries super quickly. Um, because you could essentially add two colors right next to each other without worrying about them bleeding next to each other because it dries so fast. Um, so I hope that I'm making sense right now. <laughs> So anyways, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just continuing drying this page now, and then I'm going to add some white splatter just to uh, add a little something something. <laughs> 
So I debated using white acrylic paint to do this splatter because that'll be much more opaque, but I decided to just go ahead and use the white watercolor that I have in my Cure Talking Gans Itambi watercolor set, and I'm switching to a large flat brush. Um, I think this is a three quarter inch flat brush, although the size doesn't really matter all that much. Um, and you want to have a good amount of water, but also a lot of pigment. Um, and then you just flick it with your finger and it creates all those little specks and dots. <laughs> I felt like this sort of made it um, somewhat into a galaxy. If I had done some darker tones, it would have been kind of like a galaxy painting with the stars, white stars. But um, since it's so bright and vibrant, it's just a fun abstract piece of art. <laughs> So again, just drying the page again, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it and add the lettering. All right, and now I am finally bringing out my Bible. So this is my ESV double column journal Bible. It's the first Bible that I ever owned, and it's really full. So I already have so many um, pages done in it that I have a hard time finding new pages to create in it. Um, and so I'm just putting this tip in over another page. I'm working on the same verse that I originally did back in April 2016. Um, and the original page is not too pretty. <laughs> but I thought that it would also be um, fun to show you how much I have grown as a Bible journaler um, since then, since April 2016, when I originally did the page that's in the Bible. Now I'm adding a tip in over it. I'm working on Romans 12, verse 2, which says, Do not conform, be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, so I am just currently just cutting that piece of paper, the tip in, um, that I added all the color to. Um, I'm just cutting it to size of my Bible page. There's a lot of ways you could do this. Um, I find it easiest just to kind of place it next to my Bible page, my Bible page, and just cut it. Um, but you could also measure your Bible page and uh, mark it and cut it out and get it exact like that. Also, I don't mind if my page is slightly millimeter off, um, so I just kind of eyeballed it. And then I'm also here just rounding the curve. Um, eyeballing, rounding the curve with my scissors as well. And I'm not going to attach it yet. I'm going to add my lettering first um, just to make it easier, and then I'll attach it into my Bible, especially with the Bible um, that I'm putting this in. I have so many tabs and things that it can be kind of hard to write in, so doing a tip in like this makes it so much easier. And so here I am trying to um, figure out how I want to do my lettering. I was going to kind of vary the type of lettering that I was using by doing calligraphy and print. Um, um, but I finally just decided to just do all calligraphy with my brush pen. And I'm writing out dot, 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 that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Um, so I'm using my pencil first to kind of uh, give me an outline of what to follow with my brush pen. Um, and I didn't like it few times and erased it and just did it again, <laughs> which is the be great benefit of doing it in pencil first. Okay. So I'm going to do this lettering part really quickly because um, this video is going really long and it's not a tutorial on lettering. So uh, let's just get through this and get to put it in the Bible. So um, I do, of course, have tutorials on creating lettering like this. Um, I have a uh, brush calligraphy basics tutorial as well as a bounce calligraphy, which is more of what I'm doing here. Um, and both those tutorials have free printables as well. So again, I'll put those links um, in the blog post that goes along with this video at scrollinggrace.com slash watercolor tip in. Um, and that link will be in the description below. And I'll also put all the supply links for you so you can easily find those as well. So um, be sure to check those out. So um, I just did some brush calligraphy with my Tombow Food No Suitcase brush pen. And now I'm going to use my uni. Uh, Ball Signo gel pen, white gel pen here. This is the thin tip, I believe, um, just to add some highlight to the right side of all of the strokes in my letters. Um, and that just really helps it to pop out from the page, um, helps it to the lettering to uh, not look so blended in and makes it easier to read, in my opinion, as well. And uh, 
that's it for making my tip in. Um, this all in all took about 45 minutes is a little bit more time consuming than most of my other um, Bible pages, but it was also something a little bit different. Um, making the tip in and adding it into your page does take a little bit extra time but I think that it can be worth it to a lot of people out there. So um, to attach it, there's so many ways you can go about attaching it. A lot of people just like to use washi tape. Um, you can tape it from the inside or the outside of your Bible page. I'm gonna attach mine into the inside using just glue. Um, this is just a Craft Bond Elmer's glue. You could also, I've used normal Elmer's before as well. Um, really it's not uh, it is I don't think it really matters um, I know that some people also really love to use those um, little thin uh, sticky double-sided tape roller things um, you could also just use normal double-sided tape um, but I find it just uh, for me at least easiest to just add a little bit of glue onto the edge of the page and then just kind of stick it into that middle um, portion of the Bible where the, that crease there, obviously. Um, and then I just kind of took my finger and just kind of um, got rid of the paint that kind of spilled over the edge on either side of the page. Um, just kind of tapped that page deep down into that crease. Um, and then I'm just gonna let it dry or dry it with my heat gun and then we're good to go. It's attached there into the Bible journaling page. Um, easy peasy. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed this video um, and that it gives you some good insight. I love this Tomo River paper I've decided. Look how great that looks. It looks like it's an interleaved Bible now and I could also create something on that backside of the tip-in as well later on. Um, so hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out that blog post at scrollinggrace.com slash watercolor tip-in. Um, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope that you have a really wonderful day. God bless.